What is going on, my frosty friends? My name is my name is Winter Cast Ice. Yeah, I know. Starting off strong, and welcome back to Dream Daddy. I am joined once again by my beloved fiance Abby. Say hi to the people. Hi. Hello. We are, and we are still on our quest to find our Dream Daddy. He's out. He's out there somewhere. More like your quest. Our quest. But anyways, we, me and Abby are actually really excited to get back into this game because we have so much fun with it. Uh, but if you guys remember where we last left off, we. Uh, we were got a little drunk. We made some mistakes. <laughs> we were young once, and uh, we slept with that dude, that dad. I don't know if he was a dad. No, Ro no, no, no. Robert's a dad. Is he? Everybody in the call in the cul de sac okay. is a dad, supposedly, okay. supposedly. <laughs> but either way, I love your guys' comments. We just uh, after the first two recordings, we. Uh, I just kind of wanted to see what you guys, how you guys felt about the series, and I'm really glad that you guys are liking the videos. Really appreciated to see your guys' support. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and continue on. So, <clears throat> Amanda. Um. Amanda runs out of the kitchen and looks slightly disappointed. Oh man, I was kind of hoping you had gotten kidnapped and I was gonna have to come rescue you. No, you're not that lucky. <laughs> no, I uh, made a friend at the bar last night and ended up sleeping over at his place. Where are the Emmas? Ah, oh, they left a little while ago. Oh, you guys have fun? <laughs> yeah, watched the movies, ate snacks, stole a car, you know, usual sleepover stuff. Oh, just the usual stuff, you know, stealing the car. <laughs> you teens and your larceny. <laughs> <laughs> so, this breakfast that's cooking, what's that all about? Mm. Well, there's hash browns and eggs and bacon. Really? Oh, that sounds delicious, actually. Can I? Ugh. Yes, you can have some breakfast. Yay! Bless you, sweet child. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> My head throbs. Ugh, I gotta do something about this hangover. Amanda, your loving father might have overdone it last night. Oh, somebody's hungover? Father of the year, of course. Thank you. I can't. I can only thank my loving daughter for this prize, so this father of the year award. Actually, I'd grab my like Game of Thrones music box, but it's like right behind my computer. <laughs> Somewhere. Well, it's, uh, no, it's right here. I keep I keep it close. I always have it because it's awesome. I like to listen to it. You wouldn't happen to have any aspirin or? I've just I got just the thing. Hang on. Okay, what is it? Amanda runs to the fridge and pulls out a jar of pickles. Oh, ooh. <laughs> that sounds like something me or you would do. Amanda, what? Yes. Drink this. You would drink that. I would drink that. <laughs> for, for, if there are any questions, guys, me and her really like pickles, but she likes pickle juice. I don't, I mean, I don't mind it, it's but good. I don't no, mind it, but no, I couldn't drink no, it. The pickle flavor is the best. The pickle juice? <laughs> yep. It's what I used once, uh, would assume someone would use. <laughs> I would also assume that it works pretty well. <gasps> Although I've never tried it before and won't try it, obviously. Obviously. Who raised you? Amanda <laughs> Ann! Amanda, <laughs> Amanda Ann Winterabs! How dare you! <laughs> Give her a stern yet resigned side, a side eye. Who raised you? Um, you did? Right! <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear God! Um, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> that is often what I tell my daughters. You got it. This better work. I down a sip of the tart juice. <laughs> no, no, more than that. Way more than that. Hey. I mean, I assume. Hmm. Watch it, you. <laughs> I drink more pickle juice and help myself to the delicious breakfast that Amanda has graciously allowed me to partake in. After inhaling some hash browns and dunking several pieces of bacon into a runny egg yolk, I'm starting to feel a little better. Which, by the way, is something you should always do. For those of you, I don't recommend drinking a lot. But if you are going to drink responsibly, then uh, I would recommend you eat a nice full meal before you go and have a drink. Uh, because of the fact that, you know, you as you if you drink on an empty stomach... Like you're just hurting yourself and you're if you throw up you're just gonna hurt yourself even more like eat a full meal so that way if you do get sick at least you have something to and always drink if you are hungover when you get home 
if you are like drunk to the point where you're gonna have a hangover in the morning, Tylenol or ibuprofen and water. Definitely all the night, like right before you go to bed. Definitely how it makes it up for the long run. I wouldn't know because I've never gotten drunk myself and I don't care to because I don't like the taste of alcohol, but just a FYI for any of you guys who do. I've heard my cousin talk about it <laughs> after watching. And if you're under the age of 21, how dare you? You should not be thinking about <laughs> drinking. <laughs> Amanda grabs her backpacking keys. Hey. Well, I gotta go to class. Don't forget the meeting with Mr. Vega, okay? okay? He said it was important. Love ya. I'll be there. Knock him dead, kiddo. Always do. A wink. We do our secret handshake and she's off. Oh, I cannot wait to teach our daughters a secret handshake. <laughs> I, I get a little work done at home before I glance at my watch and see that it's almost time for the meeting. I hop in the shower, change clothes, and head on my way. Still a little hungover. Awesome. You're young. Have You have your health. Now it is time to... What? I didn't finish reading that. How dare the... I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. I check my watch and, re and am relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing at, a, at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, uh, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns and looks me up and down with heavily, uh, heavily lined eyes. Well, hello there, sir. Dude. Okay, always up for freedom of expression, but I've never understood the piercings in the lips, the eyebrows, like multiple in the ears. Like, to, again, to each their own. I've just never quite understood it myself. But I mean, yeah, it's just, you know, <laughs> to, like, why? <sighs> Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Wow, you are so helpful. You are probably the most helpful person I could possibly bump into. Okay, wise guy. Are you gonna help me or not? <sighs> Fine. Up those stairs to the left. You can't miss him. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. Freak a freck! <laughs> I get back to where that low rent Gerard way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind when suddenly I head pops out of a classroom next to his locker. Oh. Lucian. Oh, wait, hold on. Hey, this is a professor. He looks to be a professor, anyways. <clears throat> <clears throat> Lucian, don't you have a third, par uh, third period to get to? <sighs> Fine, Mr. Vega. Hmm? Wow. Now I'm officially 10 minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. Um. You must be Absy. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Oh boy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mega leads me in and I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desks in the back. Oh, I might get stuck in this. <laughs> ah. All right, where were we? Now who could tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye? Oh, you're talking about the Catcher in the Rye? You're a literature teacher. Nice. Hmm. Yes, Colin. Colin stands up and does uh, the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow and making a farting sound. It's not literature. Hmm. The whole class erupts in laughter. Oh. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Ah. Now, Holden Caulfield is an, unreli an unreliable narrator in the sense that... The bell for the end of the period rings. All the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Whoa. Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody's listening. Ah. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. See, that's the, that's the thing. Teachers get a lot of crap. They really do deserve your respect. Like, they're, they're just trying to educate you. Unless they're douchebags, then that's a completely different story. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, middle schoolers. Oh, good God. Yeah, no wonder why he's having a hard time. <laughs> middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? <sighs> Both. You know, budget cuts. Oh, gosh. Right. Oh. Thank you so- thanks so much for coming in. I'm just adjusting this because I'm acting like I have a tie right here. No problem, Mr. Vega. Oh. 
Please, call me Hugo. <sighs> I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. Recent behavior? What are you doing? I don't know! What's going on? I don't know. Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares recent- uh, she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been rather- doing rather poorly on tests. I normally chalk this up to sen senioritis, but... This is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. <sighs> I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Uh, we ha she has a tendency to bottle things up. She's fine. We just moved it. We just moved. Well, we just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Oh. See if you can see if you can get her to talk about it. I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance. If she's if she keeps heading down this road, uh. I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Oh. <laughs> Anytime. God, his mustache is glorious. And he's got that sexy teacher thing going on. <laughs> on my way out, I stopped, thinking for a moment. I turned to Hugo. Hey, Hugo? Oh. Yes? They ever catch that rye? Ah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Yes. Yeah, score some points with the teacher! I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force of positivity in my life, especially after we lost her mother. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home, and maybe I could talk to her about what's going on. Yeah, I pull up to the, up to the carpool and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Yes, all of it. We, we gossiped about you. We talked about your larceny, your life of crime. Mr. Vega and I actually just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. No comments. So, you talked about Mario Batali? Batali. The whole time? It was a very productive meeting. <laughs> I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. Uh, let's go to the mall food court. Does that sound good to you? Hmm, yeah, sure. Why the mall? Jeez, can't a dad take his daughter to the mall? Ooh. Will you buy me things? <laughs> I will buy you a thing. Singular. <laughs> Sounds like a deal to me. Uh. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay, but also sometimes it's good to have the parent's perspective. Because, you know, maybe the parents also <laughs> have also dealt with similar situations. <laughs> and maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. <laughs> anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? Hmm. <laughs> what? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Is it sad that I feel like that's gonna be me with the girls when they're older? Yeah. Oh, good God. I don't even want to think about that. It's just like, have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? Since when? <laughs> Look, sweetie, Mr. Vegas said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. That's a huge thing. Like, honestly, should always turn assignments in. They're worth actually a good portion of your grade. Uh. Oh, I'm fine, Pop. Senior eyes and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vegas' class. Oh. It's fine. He's fine. We pull out to a stoplight and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. Just, I want to know that you can, t uh, I just want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, parent kids, they don't want- <laughs> How much you want to bet she's texting her boyfriend? I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want to me, uh, me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Uh, I hear Emma R's going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Uh, uh it's a- uh, I don't think you'd get it. 
Okay. Who are you texting? <laughs> Noah. A oh boy! <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> Who's Noah? <laughs> My friend. Does he go to your school? Hmm. Yep. <laughs> Do you like Noah? Yeah. What? No? Dad! <laughs> uh. Doth thou pro <laughs> doth thou pretend to not like him? I think you I think you uh deny too much. <laughs> I can't believe you would. <gasps> Dad! <laughs> Doth thou protest? I mean, jeez. Why would you... Oh. <laughs> oh. She's protesting way too much. She is lying her butt off. <laughs> Gross. Liar! <laughs> sorry, sorry. Just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Liar. <laughs> Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. But you like him. <laughs> you like like him. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. <laughs> well, well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. <laughs> she leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. To them all, then. Always try to make others around you happy. Yes, every day. Mwah. Love everybody. I actually do try to make everyone else have a good day if I can help it. We arrive at the mall, a big indoor shopping center with a couple of different floors. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering teens. Oh, those teens and they're loitering! <laughs> Let's eat something disgusting for dinner. Yes! Hell yeah! <laughs> Language, Missy. Mm, heck yeah. Better. <laughs> <laughs> we approach the food court and evaluate our options. There's greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Nobody looks happy to be here. <laughs> what are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar? Bread with cheese on it? Or do you just want me to inject some fat directly into your blood? Oh, just, do, just, just giant needle, huge syringe, all of the fat right in my arm. I send my hand, uh, my hand to her. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? We should do nachos sometimes. <laughs> okay. That would be delicious. Like getting some, just yeah, getting some nice nachos with some cheese melted on top of it. Maybe a couple of jalapenos. Just like you. I mean, just having the, some of the juice on there would be delicious. Oh, um, we just ate supper and I'm making myself hungry again. <laughs> You're making uh. me hungry again. She, she takes my hand with a grin. Uh. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. <laughs> <laughs> we order a giant pile of chips and unnaturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat at the rickety table and dig in. Whoa. These are bad. These are very bad. But also strangely delicious? Hmm. We have to eat through the pain. EAT pain. THROUGH THE PAIN! <laughs> <laughs> we enjoy the fluorescent cheesy goodness and together until we're all out of nachos. So. Huh. Something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? Oh, oh. good god. <laughs> memes are not something you can explain to a parent. Hmm. <sighs> Which meme? All of them. <laughs> all, uh, all memes. Dad. <laughs> Dad. Amanda sighs deeply and places her head in her hands. <laughs> like, kind of kinda like that. <laughs> Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time a meme gets to you, Dad, all us youths have already done the joke to death. Ugh. <laughs> and what's worse than that is that movies and TV and video games will try to jump in on memes. On, the meme, on a meme train, but based on how long it takes to make them, the meme will be long dead by the time it comes out, so it just dates it and isn't funny. Actually, to be fair, I love it when <laughs> video games put memes in them because it's just <laughs> hilarious. Like, uh, and TV shows as well, especially like How I Met Your Mother in like season 7 or season 8. Uh, Freaking uh, Robin's dad is just like, I, I, I'm on the internet. I can has cheeseburger. <laughs> like, that joke is so old. But it's so funny. 
Oh shit, what up? <laughs> oh, Dad, please. Anyway, changing the subject. What I can't I can't do I can't do other ones? Can I not talk about somebody touching my spaghetti? <laughs> no. <laughs> Where to now? Wanna go to that goth store? Hmm. What? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as an anti-establishment anti despite being an exact representation of the establishment. I think you're referring to Hot Topic. <laughs> or some store similar. Hi. I, I, don't, I don't know what store you're talking about. You know, the one where you could buy chain wallets and it's basically an assault on what people fought so hard against in the punk and hardcore movements of the 70s and 80s. Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in in that one time. <laughs> oh, that one. <laughs> Naturally. Naturally. Hey! hey! Amanda runs. Amanda runs into the store and with me trailing behind her, she makes a beeline for the back. Alright. There it is. You can still see the outline, kinda. I'm not gonna lie, I freaking love the skull rug. That is awesome. I'm so proud? Speech. Amanda. Yeah. Speech, 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 speech. It's like, speech, 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 speech. <laughs> All right, I'll do it if you stop chanting. <laughs> Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. <clears> throat> Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate a, a historic moment that would forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda Ann Water Winter Abs <laughs> had too much blue raspberry slushy <laughs> and, and on an outing to the mall. Huh. After begging her father to take her to dead goth and beyond. Wow. That is would that, be the name. Is that anything like, you know, the yellow store? To buy rainbow <laughs> suspenders. <laughs> She proceeded to throw up all over a display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. I like My Chemical Romance. Oh, I mean, they were awesome back in the day. I still listen to some of their music. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among our possessions. Thank you. <laughs> Amanda is moved. She begins clapping, slow at first, then faster and more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping. I bow my head. <laughs> oh, hey, chain wallet. While Amanda busies herself looking at band t-shirts, I try to find something of interest to myself. Not much for a dad to look at in, uh, in a dead goth and beyond. That's not true. I freaking go to Hot Topic and they sell like Benny and the Ink Machine shirts. I'm actually planning to buy one because it looks like... Oh yeah, the Riverdale stuff. They have to sell Hogwarts stuff. Just They sell a lot of gaming merchandise and I approve. Like they got Cuphead stuff that I want to get. But I mean, if it was a full on goth store, then yeah, probably not my scene. Peruse the band t-shirts. Look at iron, uh, ironic mugs. Ooh, ironic mugs. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm suddenly stricken by existential fear. If there's only uh, if there's only one number one dad, then why are there so many mugs here that say that? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I actually, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, and this is something nerdy about myself. I freaking love cups, and I love mugs and stuff like that. Like I just. They're awesome. I have like a whole collection of them. Like I think uh, the thing is Greenlee actually added to that collection because now I have the uh, Winter is Coming mug. Like it's kind of a, it's not really a mug, but it's more of a tankard, a tankard which I love it so much. I actually still use it for drinks. It's freaking sick. This whole time I thought I was the only one. He was number one. There, there are a lot of number one dads out there. Am I the number one dad though? Your two little girls, yes. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. If I'm not number one, where do I place on the global dad ranking charts? Uh, a number one up there with all the other number one dads. <laughs> I have work to do. <laughs> Look, this is very important to me. I overhear I overhear a stifled argument over at a cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a border uh, to a bored-looking cashier with pink hair. Oh god, this guy kind of looks like he's Victorian. Maybe... Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can do a voice. I'm going to come up with a voice for him. Hold on. <clears throat> Wait, this is the cashier. I can see that. I don't, don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. I. I. Listen. 
When I bought this online, the website said this blouse was Victorian inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly held the trademark of Edwar Edwardian dressage. So, wow, this guy is like specific. He is. These are what he's referring to is like traditional like English wares from back in the day. But that's a hardcore. Do you want like a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will you leave it if I give you a coupon? Did I also mention that I have coupons? Mm, I'd oh. ask for a refund. Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. Wow, you're not very good at your job then. No. I see. Well, it would seem that I have overstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will receive a strongly worded letter by post. Whatever, dude. The man whirls around and storms out, his literal coattails trailing behind him. I can't tell if they are Victorian inspired or Edwardian in nature. Amanda trouts up to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Oh no. Hey, Dadtron 5000. Yes, I'll buy it for you. <laughs> well, that was easy, thanks. <laughs> At least it's only one this time. Amanda plops the, t the shirt onto the counter and grins at the cashier. Hey. Love your hair. Huh. The cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So what was that guy's deal? The cashier rolls her eyes so hard I'm worried she'll pull something. That's, that that's Damien. He he's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag and it's clear the conversation is over. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. I think he's one of the dads. I don't know. I swear, he is probably the father to that douchebag kid from the school. How dumb. I don't think he's our kind of dad. Mm -mm. A man and I, I mean, I love history and I love historical facts, but that's taken a bit too far. No, I agree. And his son's a jerk. A man and I sit on the couch trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. Oh, cool. Long Haul Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Truckers is on. Your favorite, right? <laughs> Long Haul wow. Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Truckers? Yeah! <laughs> I would totally watch that show. Oh, hell yes! They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but also they're hunting ghosts! Wow, I've actually seen Ice Road Truckers. It's not a bad show. But then I also like Ghost hunt, ghost Adventures, so I mean... Combine the two of them. You got yourself. Uh, also, the trucks, the trucks are haunted. That'd be terrifying. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint Dogbone, the twin brother the twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo, find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no, the ghost done, done got control of the truck. I can't steer on their damn ice roads. Let me use this EVP meter and try to communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die. Ah! Almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like they're saying, you're going to die. <laughs> Those girls were about to die at you. <laughs> this is art. This is awesome. Can we do, just do it? I, want, I just want to do a whole video of just me reading lines like that. <laughs> the episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. <laughs> what media's come to nowadays. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Callum and Flint Dogbone after their disastrous ice road accident. Afterwards, I crawl into bed and get a good night's rest. Treat people better than you they treat you. Agreed, 100%. Be, treat people the way you want to be treated. So if you treat people like dirt, don't expect them not to treat you like dirt. Zzz, zzz. Me, 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 me. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never let you have never ever let me have five more minutes. So get up. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. <laughs> So, are you excited for the cookout today? Excited to beef up my grilling skills! If there's food, I'm excited. Eh, no, excited to beef up my grilling skills! <laughs> <laughs> grilling! <laughs> 
I'll see, I'll see this as a learning opportunity. If I can snake some hot grill tips, I think we can consider it a success. Oh, yeah. Mm. Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Mm -hmm. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the social butterfly. But I thought the social creature was a bird. Hence, tweet. <laughs> well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. Ah. What? No, we have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookie out on time? You know what? We're going early just because you said that. <laughs> yes! I would be that dad. I would totally be that dad. <laughs> we have never been almost on time for anything. I know, but I would do it just that one time to like a girl, like our girls is like dentist appointment. <laughs> just like, I don't want to go. We got to be fashionable. You're like, nope, just because you said that we're going, oh, no, better yet, there's school, <laughs> there's school like meetings and everything. We're just like, well, we got to be, we gotta, I don't want to be the first one there. Well, guess what? We're going an hour early. <laughs> I head out of the door, out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with a, with a store bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. Fair. I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children run through the sprinkler and adults chat in small clusters. I set our veggie plate down on the table next to the two other veggie plates. Huh? Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. Oh. Oh, welcome. I'm so glad you two are here. And you brought veggies. Oh. Let me introduce you to the my, to my family. Kids, come over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Oh, yeah. Hi. <laughs> this is Christian and Christy. They're twins. What? They stare creepily and say nothing. Come play with <laughs> us forever and ever no. and ever. That is so creepy. <laughs> then, of course, there's our youngest, Krish. Krish? Krish? Who Wait, you? where is Krish? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Oh, dear God, Mary. Is that you? Oh, God. Oh, no. It's the woman from the bar the other night. Oh, oh, Lord. oh God. What is she doing here? <laughs> oh, and how could I forget oh, my lovely no. wife, Mary? Hey. She Joseph Mary. pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Oh, Hi. Mary, sweetheart. Did you put Krish to bed? Hmm? I'll have to go look for him. Oh, wait, what did I... I'll have to go look for him. Hmm. What? You'll have to... Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. <laughs> Mary, this is our new neighbor, Abzi and his daughter, Amanda. Ah. I'd shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. You have a really serious drinking problem. I was just gonna say the same thing. I love her. Why? I don't know. I don't love her at all. Nice to uh, meet you, Mary, for, for the, the first, first time. time. Charmed. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh, God, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. <laughs> oh, boy. It, oh. it takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue to start fresh in a new city. <laughs> <laughs> My wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Amanda and I mill around and try some of the food spread out on the table. I pick up some deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling with baked goods. That doesn't sound like us too much. Mm -mm. Like, uh... I'd go for the fruits, the veggies, the, you know, the actual food. And I don't care for deviled eggs, actually. And, and every... Maybe if there's like some decent baked goods, I would like say I, brownies I, I, or something. Oh yeah, I was about to say definitely me. If I'm in a social gathering that I feel awkward, I either go for fruit or I go for like light uh, light uh, desserts like brownies. Something Maybe something that's not gonna be you know. Yeah, with that or if I'm actually comfortable, I'll like, eat like I'll actually dive into the meats. Ugh, I don't want to. I don't want to have to make friends. Ugh, come on, Dad. Who are you gonna party with when I get go out to school? But I don't want to have to do pleasantries. Mm -hmm. Dad. 
Oh, they're gonna talk about weather. <laughs> oh, go do it. Make a friend. But how can I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. This plate of cookies is my new dad. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> my daughters would totally do that too. <laughs> Amanda shoves me into the center of the yard. Well, here comes another another round, another look around and the party, and I am surprised to see some some familiar faces. <coughs> Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? Oh, it's Matt. Oh, you handsome devil, you. Oh, dang, Robert's here. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Pass. <laughs> Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? Oh, yeah, no. it's Brian. Isn't that the guy who was throwing a fit in dead Gotham Beyond? Mm. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that a man of cedar? Ooh! Oh. Hello there. And I, I know Craig! With his daughter strapped to his chest. Yeah, River. <laughs> but wait a second, all these people live in the in our cul-de-sac? Like, I know it's a cul I know that it's called a cul-de-sac, but I call it cul-de-sac because <coughs> That can't be right. I better investigate. <coughs> Talk to Robert and Brian. Mm. No. Talk to Matt, Hugo, and Craig. Yes. Talk to Joseph and Damien. No. No. I don't care for Damien and Joseph's cool, but I I'd go Matt. I I'd talk to Brian, but I would definitely not talk to Robert. But I would talk to Ma Matt, Matt, Hugo, Hugo and, and Craig. Craig. Those three are. <laughs> I, in my what do you think? In my opinion, those are our three go-tos. Uh huh. <laughs> But I say, I really like Matt, and Hugo's really cool, and Abby really likes Craig. <laughs> Craig's cool too, I like him as well. Joseph's actually a cool individual, I'd like to get to know him a little bit better. And Brian seems pretty cool, we get to have a Pokemon battle with him. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Robert? <laughs> I don't like Robert. <laughs> and Damien is interesting, I, Damien's a mystery. Talk to Matt, Hugo, and Craig. Hmm. Matt and Hugo and Craig. Uh, Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, uh, looks on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. Well, I don't. Oh no, that's Joseph's voice. <laughs> well, I don't. Oh god, that's not. It. I got. I'm trying to think of my professor voice. How did that go? <clears throat> well, I don't. Uh, well, I don't think it's fair to try and to compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they are they are a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of a time and place. And to try to take something like, say, the Rococo period and compare it to the postmodernism in America, you're completely disregarding the context in which a work of art is created. That is actually a very true fact. I am actually I took multiple sociology classes, and that is actually very very true. Comparing two different cultures and trying to say that they're actually trying to say that they're like the same or incredibly similar, when the truth is they're completely unique in their own ways. It's just... Oh, it's like comparing the ancient Egyptians with the ancient Greeks. Yeah, they're nothing compared to each other. Mm. Don't get me wrong, they were in the same time period, they met each other, they got to meet each other and everything, but the way they went about things were completely different. And, or like compare, or trying to say like... Considering it wasn't ancient Greece that had the... Had like... The ancient, oh, ancient, ancient Greeks created were the first ones to create democracy. That, that Whereas is. in Egypt, they believe in pharaohs and one divine and one divine leader. Right, and having the bloodline be pure. Exactly, just kind of like the. But either way, just like and especially when it comes to art and everything, that is definitely something because art changes so much over centuries. Mm -hmm. To compare to one to the other would be almost impossible. Matt and Hugo seem to be busy, uh, so busy talking that they don't notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. Mm. Uh, let's talk to Craig. He, he, these guys seem to be very enthralled in their conversation. Uh, yeah. But Craig is standing here alone. Let, let's let's be polite. Uh, yeah, he, he seems like third wheel in this conversation. Let, let's let's be polite. Let's let's, let's make. Craig. I turn my attention to Craig, who seems a little more attentive to my existence. How would resistance training go the other day? Oh. Uh -huh. Great! Little River here is a great cheerleader. Aren't you tiny bro? Craig grabs River's arm and waves them around. <laughs> <laughs> I love doing that with my girls. I actually did that earlier today. Oh. You can do it, Dad. I'm so proud of you. I'm sorry for pooping on you. <laughs> Been there, dude. Been there. <laughs> she must be a handful at that age. Mm -hmm. Oh? There's always they always are. Nice. But it's so worth it. 
Craig grabs River's arm again and waves him around. Oh. <laughs> also, I'm sorry for throwing up on you, Dad. Hmm. How you settling in? Uh, ne I never get too comfortable. I'm almost done. The new place is perfect. I'm almost done. There's still a few odds and ends to take care of before I can really call myself settled, but I think we can upgrade the situation to livable. <laughs> We did livable throughout the entirety of college. Yeah, my goal was for Amanda to live the sort of life that didn't involve eating spoonfuls of ranch dressing as a pl as a palate cleanser between different types of pizza. Uh. She still does though. <laughs> hey, she takes after her dad. Absie, uh, how are you liking the neighborhood? <laughs> it's pretty nice. Everybody's been super friendly. Oh. Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. God, these three, God, these three dads, oh dads! These three dads, man. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. Hey. Oh, you're cute. What is it, sweetheart? It's a flower crown. I thought you'd like, uh, you'd look cute in it. Oh. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head. Hey. That's adorable! That's awesome. Am I cool now? <laughs> the girl stares at him, <laughs> thinking it over. Mm, nope. nope! But you're slightly, le you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Abzi, this is my daughter. Hello. I'm Carmencita. Oh, that's good. that is a cute name. That's a very cute name. Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. <laughs> Are you making friends? You better be making friends. <laughs> yeah, ac yeah, actually, Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and uh, your teacher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Mr. Sure. Vega. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is what happens when I read lines with somebody else. Oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize you were... We were neighbors. Oh. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> yep. You're still gonna get me, uh, you're still gonna get me that overdue term paper? Oh. Uh, great seeing you. Amanda finger guns her way out of this conversation <laughs> like a champ. <laughs> she learned the finger guns move from me. I'm very proud. <laughs> I would be too. Oh. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? Whoa! Hugo looks around the party. He must have fi he must finally spot him because his eyes go wide. Whoa! Ernest! Ernest Hemingway Vega! Oh, that is an awesome name! Oh, you totally- you did some- you picked your literature names well, actually. Uh, Are you smoking? Hmm? Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. Nope. I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of his cigarette, then flicks it into a gutter. Oh. Unbelievable. Excuse me. Uh, Hugo marches over to Ernest, and I take my attention to Matt and Craig. No oh boy. Kids, right? Oh. Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. <laughs> nearly burned down half the yard. Oh. Whoa! Jeez, Ernest! Somebody's got problems. Somebody has a wild side. <laughs> and the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. Oh, no! Why did my Craig start go speaking Scottish? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And then it spread and then it spread onto my lawn and burned down half my yard, no. too. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> oh, wow. You are just look like you're not having a good time. Oh, boy. Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Hmm. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. Absy, this is my son, Ernest. Hmm. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep in his pockets. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey. Nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Does it matter? Yes. Mm. Oh. Ernest. Okay, okay, I'm in eighth grade. You're smoking in eighth grade? Come Ooh, on, dude. Somebody really does have problems. Come on, dude. You are smart enough not to know. To, you are smart enough to know what cigarettes will do Your to you. Your dad is a teacher. Just <laughs> eighth grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Er, 
Yeah, good for you. Hmm. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for further failing economy. I'm not touching that with a ten foot nope. pole. Ouch. I don't know. Ernest! Oh yeah? Because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts earbuds in and storms off to stand in the corner. Well, that was... That was certainly something. He seems nice. Hugo puts his head in his hands and sighs. Ah. I'm so sorry. He's having a really tough, rough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad, and he clearly resents me for it. Oh, trust me, I'm definitely gonna fear that. I'm feel that down the road. Hmm. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, that's about that's about as authoritarian as you get you can get. Hmm. Honestly, are you any are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? This guy right here, th I'm a cool dad. <laughs> I have the cool jokes. And I got the cool look. Am I right? You guys in the comment section can agree with me. What? I'm as cool as a cucumber. Cucumber man! <laughs> hey. See? That right there. You can't say that. Oh. My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we go do we get to be the cool dads? Oh. I uh I don't know. Hey! I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we've become we've become the machine we once raged against and accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. Oh my god. Please don't ever wear socks with sandals. Your kids may think you're <laughs> cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Oh please, don't, please don't ever wear socks I'm, with sandals. I don't sandals. wear socks with sandals. <laughs> Amanda's 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. Oh. I yell across the yard to my daughter, Amanda, I'm cool, right? <laughs> Amanda just laughs. She keeps <laughs> laughing. I see your point. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh no. As much as, as much as I as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be a cool uh, to be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. We we can't be, uh, all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me and Ernest. Oh. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. But it'd be nice to have it both ways. It would be nice, but unfortunately, that's just not the world we live in. No. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think about my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might come a time when it when it won't be like that. Is college when that happens? Hey. Don't let us, don't let us eat up your time. Don't let us eat up your time, Absy. Go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. Oh, but I don't want to. Uh, what path do we want to take? Mm, I just want to go with the first. Thing. Burger time? <laughs> <laughs> go with the first? Let's talk, let's talk to Brian. I walk over to Robert and Brian who are chatting over drinks, determined not to be weird about what happened that night. I hope Robert feels the same. Hey, guys. <laughs> Absy, how the heck are you? Settling into the neighborhood all right? <laughs> oh, God, Brian. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh you, oh you betcha. Oh yo, don't you there, don't you know. <laughs> I'm doing fantastic, don't you think? <laughs> Got the living room in order at least. Hey. Well, that's great to hear, I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally got the 50 inch in there. The game looks great in high definition. God, Brian, how dare you, you gotta one up me everywhere! Although our TV's bigger. Our TV is bigger. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Habsy, have you met Robert yet? Uh, yes, I, ha I have. Nope. 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 Yes. yes I, I believe we met. Bet. Briefly. <laughs> hey. Hey. Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Uh. Robert robotically extends a hand. I shake it as he stares unblinkingly into my eyes. Oh god, what does it mean? Mm. Ha how's it going? Mm. It's good. Robert focuses on the whiskey he's holding. He takes a long sip. <laughs> Great! Look at my friends becoming friends! Us dads gotta stick together, you know. Yep. Us dads? Robert has a kid? Yes, he does. Oh, I didn't know you had a kid. You had kids. Robert continues to stare at me. Jesus, does this guy ever blink? He blinked. <laughs> yep. Yep. C cool. That's cool. <laughs> we stand in an incredibly uncomfortable silence for several moments until... We gotta get off this haunted truck! Oh no! The ghost locked the doors! Ah. 
Daisy and Amanda run up to us. Thank God. <laughs> Quick, hit the emergency escape button. But trucks don't have emergency escape buttons. Ugh. Ugh. Then hit the brake, I guess, and then we'll get out of the truck. The imaginary truck. <laughs> anyway, we're safe from the ghost, but how will we survive this arctic tundra? Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? These are the questions. I'm prepared to do anything to survive. My good god, she's just like her dad. <laughs> Trying to one-up us! Uh, hmm, that's cold-blooded. I like that. <laughs> I approve. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm not sure how I have the materials required to properly cook you. <laughs> Wait a second, are you guys playing Long Haul Ice Row Paranormal <laughs> Ghost Truckers? Yes! Oh my god, yes! Yeah! Amanda and yeah. I love that show. Hey. It's the best, especially that episode where Calum and Fl hides Flint's keys and <laughs> Flint retaliates by breaking an ancient cursed urn and sending the spirit after him. Yeah, it's such a quality reality television. That's reality television? Why can't our reality TV be like that? <laughs> All right, Daisy, I found us a couple of bugs. They're going to make a great meal, lots of protein, going to keep us from starving out here in this harsh, icy wasteland. But there's a whole table full of food right over the... Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. Ah. Live a little. <laughs> Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms from a snack from the snack table. They eat them with mock disgust. <laughs> Let's go find some keep for find kindling for a fire. So to say, it's kindling. It's kindling. Yeah. It's kindling. Oh wow, Robert just smoothly just. Okay. <laughs> Shoot <Shibu> the <-duba. laughs> <laughs> yeah. But not but not actual fire. Because we're playing pretend. Yes. Now you're getting it. Daisy and Amanda run off. What a cute couple of kids. <laughs> I turn my attention back to the conversation, but wait, where did Robert go? He just, he, she would do bad out of here. <laughs> I skip the party and finally find him in the corner talking to Mary. Does, does he not want to talk? <laughs> Man, I never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. I snap out of my Robert-induced haste. I guess Amanda just sort of has a way with kids. Oh. That's, that's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her age. Hmm, it's nice that he's not trying to one-up uh, one me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Really? <laughs> she just kind of keeps to herself. Her teachers say she spends her, her every recess in the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. That, and she also might have some social anxiety. Definitely a possibility. That's not unheard of nowadays. There it is. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age too. She used to have a habit of crawling under tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. She bit people too. <laughs> <laughs> Kids, right? Gotta love them. You're required by law. <laughs> well, since you're get they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for them. Oh God. Yeah, that'd be nice. Oh. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellas. All right. Well, actually, guys, we're going to end the video here. Uh, I don't really... I hate to end it, like, halfway through a, like, a scene. But I probably... We've been recording for probably an hour now. But I say, this game is just, like, a lot of fun. It's just a nice casual play. I really do hope you guys are enjoying the series. I mean, if you guys do, if you guys do, that's awesome. I'm really happy. Uh, if you guys have a favorite dad... Please let us know in the comments section. Me and, me and Abby would be very interested to see what, see what your guys' opinion on which dad we should pursue. Because I'm, I'm still very gung-ho about either uh, Matt, uh, Craig, or Hugo. I'm, I'm still leaning towards Matt. I, I'm still leaning. Well, I could go either way between Matt and Craig. I, I don't know. I, 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 like, I, I like Matt's daughter, too. Matt's daughter is adorable. Although, after now talking to Brian... Oh, Brian's a really nice dude as well. I, I'd love to get to know him better. At least he's not trying to one-up us this time. But we still have to talk to Joseph and Damien and see uh... what he thinks. But say, Damien, I don't know how well we're going to get along with him, but Joseph. Joseph's a pretty straight-up guy. Yeah. I, I like his sense of humor. His kids, on the other hand, are just creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Who names your son? Cr Krish. 
No comment. But either way, tell us in the comment section which dad you like the most, and maybe we'll, maybe if you really like them and you want to see us try to go on a date with them, let us know in the comment section. That'd be really cool. Maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll do some a little bit more interaction. But for now, guys, thank you all so much for watching. If you did like it, make sure you press down on that like button, like there's no tomorrow, and hopefully, guys, we will get to see every single one of you in the next video. So make sure you take care and you stay frosty. Bye. See you later, guys.